Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. I've got something pretty neat for you today. Today we have the Seiko Prospects 200 meter automatic diver, model number SRPB97, also known as the Orange Samurai. Now as usual, we'll open this thing up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions, the build quality, and then I'll give you my overall impressions of this really nice Samurai re-release in this now famous orange colorway. But first, I would also like to invite you to become a patron of mine on Patreon. Check out my Patreon link in the description field. When you get a chance, you can give a one-time gift or a recurring monthly gift. It's entirely up to you. So here you go. Here are the new Seiko watch boxes, it seems. Uh, I've gotten a few uh, Seikos uh, pretty recently, and they are all coming in this new watch box, which I really, really like. I like it much better than the blue. So let's take this thing out. And I did another Seiko review, gosh, a couple days ago. So you've seen this watch box before and you know what comes in it now this is the launch edition uh can't talk today this is the launch edition samurai so you get this really nice silicone strap with it really really cool now these straps also come on much more expensive prospects models by the way i love this is one of the most supple straps out there i love this thing really really nice of course you have the signed buckle the signed keeper this nice brushed finish on the keeper and the buckle a little bit of polished and brush Really, really like these straps. I always say that Citizen makes some of the best silicone straps, but this one, I think they're they're really, really neck and neck right now. Really, really nice strap. All right, so let's take this thing out. Of course, you get a black watch pillow now. And let's look in here. Let's see what we get in the bottom. All right. Looks like you get, what is this? Just Seiko thanking you for buying a watch with them. And uh, what else? Oh, it says a silicone strap is included with your purchase because this is the launch edition. Pretty cool. Of course, you have the uh, the manual right there. You have, I guess this is registration maybe? Yep, registration. And your warranty card with your card back there in the back. There you go. Pretty, pretty cool. I really like the fact they have uh, changed up these watch boxes and I, I told you all that in the last review I really like these watch boxes so much better all right put the strap Man, I really like that strap all right let's put that back get this all out of the way here for just a second and I'll get you some rough specs with this thing and of course always refer to manufacturer specifications for the exact specs let's get you some rough specs here Man, this watch is heavy. Now, this is my first time reviewing a Samurai, the re-release, by the way. So this is a brand new, brand new watch to me. So let's take a look at this thing. All right, let's look at your case. Okay, I'm getting 42 and a half, but that's probably not including the crown. They're probably including the crown. Seiko says it's 44, but I'm getting 42 and a half. Anyway, so that's probably, you know, again, without the crown. Let's talk about thickness. Thickness, you're looking at 13 millimeters. Let's do your lug to lug. Lug to lug is, let's say, uh, 48, almost 49 millimeters. And let's talk about your bracelet. Looks like the bracelet really doesn't taper at all. Yep, exactly. Yep, 20 millimeters. There you go. So I'm going to put all the rest of the specs up on the left-hand side for you. All right, you uh, have uh, 200 meters water resistant, which, of course, is 660 feet. It does have the 4R36 movement inside. Uh, it has a 41-hour power reserve. You have a date function over there at 3 o'clock. You do have a unidirectional bezel with very nice click action on it. Of course, it's a Seiko. It has a hard Lex crystal. And, of course, it's a Seiko. It has Lumabrite all over the indexes and hands. Uh, it has a screw-down crown, and I'll talk more about this over here at uh, 3 o'clock. Of course, it's windable and hackable, and it has a diver extension which I will demonstrate a little bit later in the review so here you go again my first time reviewing a samurai uh, it's got a nice bit of heft to it it's an interesting case it's very angular kind of reminds me of, like the Lamborghini of Seiko Prospect watches very angular watch um, I like it I, I, I would like it maybe a little better if it was a little bit more rounded I'm so used to those to those uh, new turtle reissues where they're all nice and rounded. But I do like this. I wish it was maybe a little bit more rounded, just personal preference. Uh, case, uh, you can see basically there's one polished area right here in the middle. Just about everything else on the case is brushed. Uh, on the top of the lugs there, uh, over here where the crown is, uh, everything else is pretty much brushed. Um, real nice crown. I absolutely love this crown, super nice knurling. 
really good grip. Super nice crown pop to it. Like it. Just push it in there, screw it back in. I like crowns that have a lot of knurly on them. This definitely has a lot of knurly on it. And it's not too hard to unscrew or screw in. It's got like the perfect amount of tension for me uh, for a crown. Really, really like the crown. The bezel, you can see it has some like almost like coin edge knurling around the bezel. Check out the nice click action. You do have a little bit of play. This is not one of the tighter bezels I have ever encountered, but let's see if it lines up perfectly, which I have a feeling it probably is going to. Look at that. There you go. Well, take that back. It's a tiny bit off, just a little bit off. Not, not, not a big deal. Now, another thing I was, I'd, I'd been reading a lot of posts and they were saying they were having some pre-production issues with these. Or I'm sorry, some early production issues with these where the crown wasn't lining up perfectly in between the crown guards. Like the crown itself will be down a little bit or up a little bit and be too close to either crown guard. It looks like they fixed that. Uh, so far as the bezel not lining up, let me try that one more time, see if I can get it to line up perfectly. It's not a huge deal, but when you pay this much money for a watch, you want everything to be perfect. Yeah, it's a little bit. It just looks like it's just a tad off. Not a big deal. It looks like the chapter ring lines up with the 12 o'clock index perfectly, and all the indexes are fine. So that's not big. Now these indexes are not, I mean, they're, they're semi-applied. looks like it's just a very heavy coating of the Lumabrite luminescent paint but I don't think the indexes are actually applied themselves. At least they just don't look that way to me. It looks like there's just multiple coatings of the uh, Luma Bright paint on there. So anyway, obviously blaze orange dial, uh, actually not really blaze orange, more like uh, kind of like a more subdued blaze orange. Blaze orange is almost like fluorescent in color. Uh, these orange releases from Seiko have become really, really popular. And everybody knows the most famous one is one of the orange monsters, uh, whether it be you know first, second or third generation. Um, really, really nice. Actually, I don't know if they have a third generation. I'll have to look that up. I can't remember if they have third generation. I know they have it in black. They have that really, really nice blue that's from Japan. And I don't know if they have a, a third generation in orange for the monster or not. I'll have to check that out. If they do have it, I'll, uh, I'll pop it up on the screen for you. So anyway, so uh, just really, really nice indexes. Your typical monster hands. These are monster hands. At least that's what I call them. Really, really big indexes, by the way. Uh, I love just the contrast of the orange and the black. I'm not a big fan of the orange for the 15 minute interval on the uh, bezel. And I'm gonna show you a couple things I did just to, just to get your opinion. Not crazy about this, personal opinion. Also not crazy about the fact that there's no um, bezel or border around the date window. I would like it if they would go ahead and delineate the date a little bit better from the rest of the dial. I like to see a bezel around a date window. Just so you know it's there, it's easily identifiable, it's different from the rest of the dial. You know, for me, per, you know, personally, I like to see a date window. Also, I mean, they maybe could have done something with the, uh, the second hand. Uh, again, personal preference. You know, everybody has their own uh, designs and, and the ways they like things and, and their own personal preferences. These are mine. Now let me show you, up on the left-hand side of the screen, now this is what I would like this is what I think it would look like. I did a little bit of Photoshop magic here, but this is what I would like to see with just an all black bezel and then just some um, orange increments on a totally black bezel. So you can see that there. And then I also did a version where the whole bezel is black <clears throat> and those increments are just white, just like the rest of the bezel. So you can see that there. Uh, personally, I like the second version where the whole bezel is just black and white, no orange at all in the in the middle of the 15 minute increment. So anyway, this is just, just an idea. I don't know if, you know, obviously Seiko's not gonna do that. They've already designed the watch and started producing the watch. But again, just not a big fan of this orange band. Again, personal preference. Uh, the overall design of the watch, I like a lot, I really do. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the bracelet a little bit more. Just your typical standard Seiko bracelet, you know, no big deal. You've got your, looks like your four uh, micro adjustments there on the clasp. You have a sign clasp, um, some polished in, uh, links on the end, uh, brushed on the top and the bottom. Uh, of course, you do have a diver's extension as you do with most 200 meter rated Seiko um, Prospects watches. Let me show you. It gives you, I guess, about an inch. So you take it, pop it out, and then pop the bracelet open, and there you go. And this is to fit over a wetsuit. There you go, and then you just take this little hook, you can see right there, the hook, and you just take it and 
pop it over and snap it back. And there is your dive extension. Uh, the case back, typical Seiko watch case back. You got the Tsunami logo there. You've got some laser etched information about the watch under that blue sticker. Everybody's very familiar with these blue stickers. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing spectacular. Just your, your typical nice Seiko case back, screw down case back. So there you go. I'm trying to think of anything else about the watch that's kind of glaringly obvious that I might have missed. Um, that's really about it. Not, I have to be honest guys, not one of my favorites. Um, I just, I think I really prefer the aesthetics of the turtle reissues as a, and they don't have an orange turtle by the way that I know of. If anybody's seen one, please correct me. I'm pretty sure they don't have a new orange turtle re-release. And when they do make those, and I guarantee you they're going to, because all these re-releases have been extremely successful for Seiko, I will snap one of those up in an absolute heartbeat. So hopefully it'll, it'll be a launch edition like this one and come with the additional silicone strap. But if they do an orange turtle re-release, I will absolutely snap that one up. So anyway, so that's really about it. Let's go ahead and try this thing on real quick. And surprising, this is too big for me. Most of the time these fit right out of the box. This is a little bit too big. Man, that's a good looking watch. For some reason, this particular model kind of reminds me of a Doxa. Those Swiss made watches kind of reminds me of a Doxa. Let me put one up on the left hand side of the screen for you. I don't know why, it's not that they look particularly that much alike, it just reminds me of a Doxa watch for some reason. There you go. All right, so of course now the moment you've all been waiting for, the classic Seiko Loom. So let's go ahead and kill the light here. Let's kill the monitor. And let's show you what this Loom looks like. You know what's gonna happen, this thing is gonna light up like a Christmas tree, they always do. Really, really impressed. I have always been impressed with Seiko Loom. The Loom Bright's just, I mean, it's just the best in the business. All right, and there you go. As usual, the Loom always is always knocked out of the park. Really, really nice Loom. God, that's really, really bright too. Good grief. Let me, you know what, let me get it totally dark in here. Hold on just one second. Let me check something here. Wow, it shines even brighter now. Let me go ahead and zap it again to give you the full Loom experience. Whoa, there we go. Now we're talking. <laughs> wow, that that has got to be the brightest Seiko Loom I've seen on any watch. Now, I did one of those Seiko Marine Masters, I guess, last year. This is almost as bright or maybe even brighter than the Marine Master. Good grief. That is incredible, incredible Loom. All right, let's go ahead and kick the lights back on. Let's turn this monitor back on so I can look at all my notes here. Now, what I'll do, guys, is I'll go ahead and put a link in the description field uh, for you to buy this watch. Uh, it's not too, it's not too bad. It's definitely affordable. It's going to be a little bit more expensive because, because of course this is a launch edition and you do get that silicone bracelet. Um, but that's really, really it guys. Um, try to think of anything else. Guys, I think that's really about it. If you like this video, please click on like. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I would really, really appreciate it. And I'm actually going to be out until Thanksgiving. Got a lot of Thanksgiving plans going on. I got to take the little man over to the in-laws and, and do the whole, you know, Thanksgiving thing. Uh, of course, he has an absolute blast. It's fun to watch him, you know, run around and play in the leaves and stuff. So uh, I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, just absolutely go go crazy. Eat as much turkey as you possibly can. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy the weather outside. This nice new crisp fall weather. And uh, guys, that's really about it. Until after, sometimes after Thanksgiving, I will see you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.